Cousin Cassius, Seifel TV, here in Hull. Adam, you must be ecstatic. What, what an emotional night for Curtis Woodhouse to become British champion. And you're a part of that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was a privilege to be part of that because he's a wicked fella, you know. I, I, I've known him for a few years because I signed him promotionally years ago when, when we were on Satanta and, uh, and had to release him. But every time I've met with him, I've, you know, I've always warmed to him. He's such a character with a, with a story that I've known for a long time. And uh, when they made the fight, I gave Dave a call, Dave Caldwell a call, and I said, look, if there's any way I can help, let me know. And all I was thinking about at the time was maybe some money for sponsorship, for training. Come back and said, oh, can Curtis come down and train with him? So he came down and trained for a period of six weeks. And we worked on a game plan in the gym. I had him sparring with Nathan Cleverly and Andy Lee, properly sparring as well, not tippy-tap. And, uh, and I was confident. I knew he had the skill set to win the fight and the desire to win the fight. We just didn't know whether he could do it under the spotlights. And he did. And I'm happy. Uh, going into this fight as an underdog, let's, let's not make any mistake about that. And uh, a lot of people would have sit down there and to retain his title but Curtis was always talking about his destiny and obviously your team and him and everyone involved believed that Curtis could, could do this and he has done it. Yeah, no I believed he could do it. I, don't, I, wouldn't wanna, I don't like losing, I don't like being involved with losses but I knew, I knew he could do it and I just wanted to help any way I could. And so it was, you know, it's a, it, it was a privilege to, to be involved and, and, and the moment when he got the decision felt as, as good as pretty much anything that I've done. What, what, what was it? Because it was always like a little bit of a, not conspiracy, but whether you were training him or not, what was all that about? Was it, was it out there for people to know whether know, you were training him? I, I, I didn't say anything. I don't want to make a song of the about it. I just wanted to do the job. Um, and I asked him if he, you know, if he would just not say anything about it and let's just do it. It's not about Twitter. It's not about that. I knew how much he wanted this. I knew what it meant to him. And, uh, and I just didn't want to be, you know, get him dragged into talking too much shit about things that he didn't mean too much. Just uh, let's do the job win the fight and then we'll celebrate for years after. Um, obviously, he said before the fight, didn't make any uh, secret of the fact that he said he would retire uh, straight after this. And Do you believe that that would be the case? 100%. He's yeah. done. So he won't get up in the morning and think, oh, you know, if he's an offer's on the table for him. How many people would have thought he would have walked away from playing the football at the level that he played at, earning the money that he would to go and box for a few hundred quid a time? Mm. You think that he won't do that? Well, he did and he stuck with it. And, it, and he... And, no, the type of character he is when he, you know, he does something, he does it wholeheartedly with commitment, with character, with, with you know, just such a good guy, fun to be around. It, it, you know, in life there are people that deserve success, and in life there are people that maybe you think don't deserve success, and he certainly does, 100%. What were you telling him uh, going into the last round? Cause... Um, well, uh, no, at the end of the 10th, sorry, at the, at the end of the 9th, I knew it was a three round fight because I knew it was one of those fights that could just could end up going either way that closely. And um, you know, and I, I don't normally you know, use emotional chat and things to pull people's heart things, but I knew that that would get that extra bit out of him. And, uh, and in the last three rounds, he hurt Darren in all three of them, and he hurt him quite badly a couple of times as well. And, and each time he hurt him, you could just see Curtis's belief that he knew he was going to win the fight, and I, and I thought he pulled away in that last stretch. Yeah. Um, all right, well, Adam, can I just um, while I've got you, we don't always have you. I'm not interested in talking about anything else other than Curtis. You don't want to talk about anything else? Uh, why? Because well, I've never seen you about, so you I just will. want to ask your opinion. You will. Just tell me your opinion on the rematch being made between George and Carl. What, what is your thoughts on that? Um, good fight. Good fight. Uh, be interesting to see um, who can tidy up the mistakes they made in the first fight. Do you believe the fight would have been made if George hadn't forced the situation of putting himself into a mandatory position again? don't know he certainly didn't hurt his case by being as active and as noisy as he did because I believe that Carl doesn't want to fight him again I, I did believe that but he is and uh, George pushed it and helped whatever the reasons were the fight's on we're talking about possibly Carl approaching the fight a different way do you think George will approach the fight a different way uh, yeah I think he should yeah it's like uh, just slightly different yeah. only because he made some mistakes in the first time but uh, George has always been good second time around like even like, inspiring when he's sparred with people and hasn't sparred well, he's gone back the next day and and been completely different and dominated. I remember telling him on quite a few occasions in fights you don't get a second chance to correct it, you've got to correct it in the fight. But this time he's got a second chance to correct it and, and I'd be surprised if he didn't. Okay. Will you be involved in any sort of way? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, David's here, was here, I had a chat with him earlier on. 
to the shoulder injuries coming on. It'll be a while before that's healed properly, but 50-50, you said, about possibly fighting again. So, same thoughts. Ten questions? I'm not thinking about it. Let's do ten questions. Let's do ten questions. Can I ask you ten questions? You can't ask me yeah. ten questions because this interview is about you. Bye. <laughs> Talk to me now. Talk to me. <laughs> Talk to me now. Gary Logan. Look at Gary Logan. I'm just buzzing. That's you're it. Buzzing. buzzing. Um, you saved Dan and Booth there for more uh, <laughs> you really torture. No, torture. Oh, no, he okay. likes it. But um, listen, emotional night here. Bobby Rich, you come in as well, actually, because okay. you're part oh, of well, the right. Bobby Rich and Hello, Gary Logan. Gary. Listen, let's have it right. Darren Hamilton, a lot of people tip Darren Hamilton uh, to win this fight. And like I said, Big you guys, Curtis Woodhouse, uh, were very confident that it wasn't going to be the case and that proved not to be the case. So, you know... Yeah, what, you got, what was different well, this time look, What was different is that it's easy to say Curtis is better prepared. He's better prepared. I would say he was prepared mentally. He, 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 by, the time he, better, yeah. by the time he came to us, he already said to us, I want to win this fight. And Booth gave him the tools and he just did things that no other no other um, challenger has done to Darren. Just different things. Things we're not going to go into because we can't. Just in case we're going to turn now that I'm in. We're going to shoot our bolt right now. <laughs> but, um,. Yeah, um, we just did different things that Team Hamilton didn't expect, and it, you know. Um, but oh God, he, you know, Darren put up a he great fight. He wanted this bad. He was yeah. He was Sunday night, he's travelling down to us down in London for yeah. does it take three hours? Yeah. Every Sunday night, coming down Sunday to us night. for three, four nights a week. You know, two Mate, sessions, three sessions. Taking a day. lumps against yeah. Andy Lee and Nathan Cleverly and sparring. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, he's he got out of the ring one time after about eight rounds with both of them, four rounds each, and they put it on him, and I said. That's worth 12 rounds, mate. You've done, you've done 12 rounds. It's 12 quality rounds with anyone. These guys are bigger, stronger, heavier, sharper than you. And he did it. And he just showed. And you know what? What I've always said this to be. The most amazing thing about Curtis is that he's got no amateur pedigree. But there's times when he throws shots as good as any pro that's around. He throw a great left hook to the belly. He saw a great left hook to the head. Right hands over the top. Great jabbing. I mean, he jabbed a man that normally out jabs every opponent. I mean, the length of his arms are just I mean, ridiculous. To get Curtis took that jab away at times, off the you know. Line and, but you know, nevertheless, it was a close fight. But I just think this thing was destiny, man. Because that's how we do. Yeah. <laughs> that's how we yeah. do. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, Bobby Mitch, uh, Gary Logan, like I said, emotional in there with Curtis Wood as it, yeah, it was only going to be that way after what happened. I will so. never ever forget this yeah. fight. So uh, congratulations Thank you very much. to you Thank lot. Thank you very much. And uh, you know, it's back to the holiday in, you'll keep telling everybody. Oh, we're going home, man. We're going home. No, he's lined up at holiday in. Yeah, I've got, <laughs> hey, you got something lined up. I've got something lined up. Look, listen, you've got holiday in room 301. They say wait for you, Mr. Logan. <laughs> <laughs> you? Not <laughs> no, that much. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> we're heating the motorway when we're off home. Let's go back to London. All right, Thank guys. Gary Logan, Bobby Rich, thanks for your time. That's it.